right, first I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. I really appreciate the audience that I have in person, and I know I have an, uh, a good online presence as well. Um, so to get started, just how did I get here? I have lived on farm my entire life. My grandpa was a livestock dealer, and it, goes, it just goes way back in my genes to be involved in agriculture. I grew up loving Penn State, and I always knew from a very young age that I wanted to come here. And at, the, at that point, I wanted to major in animal science, and I did for most of my freshman year. And then my dad, who's in the audience today, for the online audience, had always said for, that I should be a teacher. And some other things happened, and now here I am. So the first question, who do I aspire to be as a teacher? So my personal teaching philosophy, which is in the handout, one thing I really believe in is reflecting and asking questions. Student, in order for students to understand, they should really be thinking and asking questions and just reviewing what they have learned or what has been taught, and hopefully they've learned. I am driven by student success, growth, and passion within the students, and my own passion. As I had said, I've grown up on a farm. I love agriculture. That's one of the big themes of why I'm here and doing what I'm doing today. And developing leadership skills and working together with other people. I think that's, that that's obviously really, really important as in the future, in whatever career they go into, they will have to talk to other people at some point. So when they're in the classroom, it's a good practice to be practicing these skills. So moving on to classroom management, I have three posters here that I will utilize in the classroom during student teaching. My first one is procedures. Be on time. Timeliness is always good. You don't want to miss anything. Everything that goes on is important. Be prepared for class, work in a clean area, and be responsible. Uh, these all kind of go together for me because I think, just as I've been saying, be prepared, you don't want to miss anything, and you want everything to be in line so you can maximize your learning experience <coughs> or your work experience, whatever it may be. The second poster I have is expectations, and this is all all of these are based around safety as well. It's always good to be safe. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to hurt anybody else. And you don't want to hurt the equipment that you are using. And the safety, it, safety is really important in lab situations. As, um, I, just as I said before, you don't want to hurt anything and you want to be safe. So obviously the first one is be safe. Be respectful of not only yourself, of others, and of everything that is around you. Be on task, be yourself, and have fun. I think being yourself and having fun is super important as they, is super important as students want, need the desire to learn and they, they learn more, they learn better when it's something they're interested in, in and something that's fun for them. And I think if I can make my classroom fun and get knowledge across, then we're good to go. And my consequences, they are in line with Cedar Crest consequences. Um, for the most part, some wording may differ, but my first consequence for any, in, for an infraction of any of my procedures or expectations is a verbal warning, and then I will give a call home. An office, in the third, is an office referral and detention. So, I also reserve the right to skip any one of these, depending on the severity of the infraction. My model pro 
program curriculum. This is just the classes that are going to be offered, that I would like to be offered in my ideal program. So freshmen or first year students, whatever it may be, I had planned it as ninth through 12th graders. They can take Intro to Agriculture, Animal Science 1, and Ag Mechanics 1. They are either, they can take either one, two, or three of those at the same time. Um, but Intro to Agriculture is required for everything else, for horticulture, plant science, food science, wood and forestry, animal science, and ag mechanics. And then you have to pass the first level course in animal science and ag mechanics in order to get to the second level. And the two, The two down in the corner, FFA and SAE, and Ag Leadership, everybody, uh, every student in my program would have an FFA, FFA and SAE class, and Ag Leadership must be taken by seniors. So my, and along with the ideal program that I have is a comprehensive lab integration plan. I have this decorative shelf right here. It's made out of pallet wood and they would have, it's actually, it was per person or per project, it would be under $4. And it's pretty simple if you look at it, but it requires a lot of thinking and planning. And while I was building this project, I actually had a couple setbacks, but I overcame it and got it done. And then the students would have the option to stay in the project as well as I have. Along with projects are work-based experiences or supervised agriculture experiences through SAE. This is a work-based experience that prepares the students for the real world. For those of you, those of you who don't know, they can the students can do what they love, and they must keep their record must must keep records on it that whether that's financial supplies, etc. And with that is the three circle model, and the other the other component is FFA. Through FFA, going to conferences and uh, going to conferences, you find friends from across the state, potentially with the same interests as you, and it's a fun way to have classroom experiences. You still learn but it's really fun and it's an enhancement on what you learn in the classroom. So my chapter recruitment video was done with Kayla. <coughs> this is just a little snippet of it. And before I actually let it play, when I was use it when I was editing it, it ended up not, it wouldn't let me save it right, so we have the watermark. under ninth, even um, up through se seniors in high school could walk, it's geared towards, and community involvement. I did my community-based unit through my animal science reproduction unit. There 
is a farm that is about five minutes from the high school. That's actually one of the students' dairy farms, and they have pigs as well. The students would first learn about reproduction, and then we would go to the farm and visit it and talk to the girl's parents. And when we come back from the field trip, they would the students would prepare a mini lesson plan and teach eighth graders about basic animal science reproduction. So the next phase of my presentation, what experiential education opportunities have I engaged in to become a better agricultural educator? As I had said at the beginning, I started out as an animal science major, but when I switched, I decided to minor in animal science since I was already part of the way there. I also have the NSC MOP certification, which is the safe tractor driving. We have to get certified in first aid and CPR. And I also took the Serve Safe Food Handler certification, which there's a lot of, I'm teaching a food preservation unit and I think would be really helpful to have that background information and potentially even get the students the certification. So some key courses that I have taken through Penn State, um, I think my biology 120A class, it was a plants, places, and people. It was more geared, to geared towards agriculture and it really helped me with the background knowledge of plants and the, horm the plant hormones and it made me stronger in that aspect. And I included livestock judging on there. That is my class that I actually recently just got finally from last year. It was really, it was a really great experience for me. It helped me to open up with speaking and it helped me to articulate my words better and come up with a cohesive, a cohesive uh, speech for reasons and, and that can translate to other things as well. I was also a teaching assistant for the meets and technology lab that we have that really helped me to realize what all goes on as a teacher. Um, we didn't have full access to everything, and there was all, there's a lecture portion that goes along with this class, but I graded papers and had to lead a couple of classes and prepare the introductions for several labs throughout the semester, and that took place this semester. So I think it was a good supplement with everything that we have learned in AEE 412 and our teaching lab. And of course, as I mentioned, AEE 412, um, it helped me to gain te different teaching methods and, um, and starting on the confidence that I need to be up in front of the students. Some professional development experiences that I got to partake in this semester, well, not just this semester, but this entire year, in fact, I went to the Teaching and Learning Technology Symposium, I think I got that right, in the spring. And that was really helpful just meeting everybody that was here at the Penn Stater and just seeing what was out there. The trip, the trip, the DSA trip or Domestic Study Away was really eye-opening as I think that I saw a lot of things that I wouldn't see otherwise. We went to a school in Massachusetts and it was right on the, or I think it was Massachusetts, it was right on the edge of, of the water and it was a complete um, sea-based school and it was just a different aspect of agriculture that was really emphasized up there and it was really neat to see all of that. And they even had a boat simulation, which was pretty cool. It was really fun to play on. They let us take a little trip around. The PAAE conference in, in the summer 
and the NAA conference, which was in San Antonio uh, just the other week, it really got me to meet new people as a common theme of mine. And it was just really eye-opening to see. I went to a couple workshops that really stuck with me. Um, Dr. Foster's empathy workshop actually was really good. And <laughs> and it really um, it really hit with me. I needed to I knew I needed to learn more about like the difference. We talked about the difference between empathy and sympathy. And that was really good to finally like bounce ideas off of other people and such. And the other one was a special needs workshop that was really helpful for me. Um, Miss Becky Haddad was the um, instructor and she had us go through activities of what it would be, simulating of what it would be like to have a slight learning disability. And that was really cool to see that and go through that and, and just, it gave us an insight on how to help our own students that would have those disabilities. And of course, National FFA Convention, I got to go with my cooperating center and I had to be in charge of them. If I'm, to be honest, it was hard because we are, we have all talked about, we are pretty close in age to some of the students and it was hard to be, it was all girls, so it was really hard to not be friends with them first and realize that, hey, you're the teacher, you need to be, you need to be on top of your game and not right there with them. You need to be a step ahead of them. Some other key experiences that really contribute to my AGAD journey. Uh, like I said before, the judging team that was explained. Um, Clark Shoes Employment, that might be a weird one for everybody, but it was working in retail. So I think working with people over the holidays especially really helped me to have patience and know how to deal with things when they arise out of nowhere. State 4-H Council, I was the historian and I was in charge of the scrapbook and just being on that state-wide team, there was nobody else from where I was from, so it was kind of hard to relate to everybody, but that was okay. We made through, we had a successful year. And running for state FFA office, that's one of the things I always wish I had done a second time. I learned a lot. I think that week was really the week that I overcame my lack of, not, I'm still working on my self-confidence, but I really overcame my lack of self-confidence that week after I went through the speech and everything and all the interviews, I just sat there and I breathed, and it was fine. Everything was fine. Um, outdoor school was another really great experience that helped me with teaching. I was in charge of fifth graders that week. My group of girls were pretty good. There was one that was a little challenging, but with the help of my co-counselor who had done it before, we got through the week and it was a really productive week. The girls learned a lot, and I got to work with all the other counselors, and we got to lead workshops about wildlife and the environment. And with that, the, a couple of the girls in outdoor school were from diverse populations, so that kind of helped me get acclimated to that as well. Workforce Ed 413, it gave me the base knowledge for what I needed to know. Excuse me for a second. The base knowledge from Workforce Ed 413 helped me to get a grasp of what was in store and 
as I mentioned before, the special education workshop at NAAE and being in a diverse classroom, just being in a diverse classroom. I was from, I'm from a small town and there weren't very many diverse populations at all. So just having that experience, just being in there, just being in a diverse classroom will help me. I think that would be the best step towards, um, towards accomplishing that. So on the third phase of this, how am I prepared to maximize my student teaching internship opportunity? I am headed to Cedar Crest with Phil Hausner, which is my cooperating teacher, and Darren Grumbine teaches Ag Tech 4. There is 100% SAE participation of, as of now. It is part of the grades in their classes. And there's classroom, shop, small animal room, and greenhouse. Um, <coughs> Ag 1 does a lot in the greenhouse, propagating plants, uh, just replant, just a lot, a lot of plant stuff, and they have a poinsettia sale as well. And in the small animal room, all ninth graders get a get a rabbit their first year, or all first year students get a rabbit. And chapter three three nine is the program approval for uh, the Department of Education. I actually had the opportunity to sit, to sit in on a meeting while I was visiting the one day. That's how we started off our day. It was Mr. Hausner and some of the office staff that were looking at the form and we all sat, they all sat there and talked about it and they knew which items that they could find that they could help and contribute to the overall, um, the overall binder that they needed for the program approval. They are still working on retention through all four years. As the class, as the classes advance, student numbers go down, and that's one thing that is really going to be worked on. The units that I will be teaching are listed here. There is a handout; it, it is in your handout as well. In my Ag 1 course, plant propagation, port and plant science, and soils, that kind of all goes together for me. It's a big, it's a big part of their Ag 1 class, is plant-based. I have small, small, a small, small gas engine unit and a meat unit, and small food preservation fermentation, and the others you can um, read in the handout, but I'm most excited for my repro and genetics unit. Um, that's my strong suit, as I said, so I'm excited for those ones. There are 11 units total. My binders are, are organized in Ag 1, 2, and 3, and 4. I thought that was the most logical way to organize them because the units are so small within the um, within each class, and digitally it looks a lot different than just three <coughs> binders. Some strengths and areas to improve on for myself. My passion for ag is a big one, which I had talked about earlier. Honestly, I'm honest with coworkers, honest with my friends, and I want to be honest with my students. I'm also adaptable. It's hard at first, but excuse me, I will overcome challenges, and I do get through things, and it's okay. Through my teaching labs, I had the always had the issue of the confidence. I was always up there, I was always nervous, always shaking, and I know I'm doing some of it now too. <laughs> and a comment I always got to was I was too nice. For the students who were misbehaving, even though it was only awesome, we knew what was happening, 
I was always too nice and I should have been more harsh. I had a couple technology students that were always on their devices and I should have taken them away. I should have actually like made them stop what they were doing and pay attention. And also time management is something I really want to work on. I can be on time, I'm on time to all my classes, but if there's something that's in the back of my head, then I stress about that and don't focus on getting it done on time and getting there on time. Some personal and professional goals, which I also decided to include in the handout was to gain my confidence. In some good way, impact every student. That's a big thing of mine. I just want, I want to be impactful because that was what my, my high school experience was like. And I want to focus, along with that, I want to focus on the growth of myself and my students. I just want to become a better person and become a teacher who not only teaches students about agriculture, but teaches them about the real world and life. So what questions are there? Sarah, before we start questions, I want you to breathe deep. <laughs> breathe in. <laughs> breathe out. And everybody, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> I appreciate you completing this. I appreciate the hard work and effort you put in. We are excited to ask a few questions. We set aside approximately 15 minutes for questions. We rotate from our audience here in the room to our virtual audience to the teacher education panel. And so I always start with the audience in the room. Uh, does anyone have a question? Ah, yes. Yes. <laughs> it's been really awesome following you for the last four years. Uh, you started out with the governor's school in 2014. Was that experience, since you were a high school student at the time, will that experience influence any of your student teaching as you go into student teaching? Yes, I, I believe it will. Um, Governor's School, for those of you who don't know, it was a four week long program when I took it. It is now the School for the Excellence. Okay, <laughs> I was like, I think it's just School for the Excellence. It was really hard for me to be there because I was super attached to showing my animals throughout the summer. <laughs> and the one, the last week, of it was the week of our roundup show, our terminal show for our market animals. And it, it was just really hard to get over that. And I actually cried that first Monday because I knew I was supposed to be at the show. But I think that throughout that experience, I met so many people. I still, I'm still in touch with several of them. And every once in a while, I'll get together with them and have shared our college experiences together. Um, as for teaching, I think it was just working with people and getting to know, that was when I first met Dr. Foster and, well, and Jenna, but <laughs> um, there were a lot of people that ended up being my college professors or being present whether it was in um, any of the uh, staff offices. And just the networking portion is really important, so I know I always have those connections there. So I'd like to follow up, though. Tell us about how um, those experiences will impact how you student teach at Cedar Creek. Okay, so it'll impact my student teaching because it gave me, it, it first exposed me to different teaching methods and organizations of classes than what I was used to through high school. And I think just seeing the diversity, not that I remember everything exactly from it, but seeing the diversity of teaching methods and styles in the classroom really helps me to think about and reflect what I'm going to do in the future. Does that answer you, your question? Yeah, it is question. So, uh, from our virtual audience, Tiffany. All right, we have a question on Facebook from Amanda. 
thinking it's Amanda Lee. I'm thinking it's Amanda Forstater. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amanda Forstater, graduate from 2015, Team. currently teaching in Florida. She would like to know what you think will be your biggest challenge during student teaching and why. Ooh, she's also very proud of you. <laughs> Thank you, Amanda. Um, my biggest challenge during student teaching. That's correct? Yes, and why you feel it will be that way. I think, as I mentioned about National Convention, it's kind of a two-part answer for me. Um, the first part is that I'm still working on the whole age gap thing that I talked about with the four girls that went to National Convention. Um, that's going to be one of the challenges because, because of being so close in age and being um, just that presence. There's a strong female presence in Sear Press as well. And the second part is the um, behavior management. As I had said, I was too nice in all my teaching labs, and I know that it's going to be hard for me to, I guess, inflict more. I don't, I don't know the right word for that, but be more harsh with my discipline. <coughs> and I, I keep looking up there. <laughs> And um, just because I'm just naturally more of a nice person that doesn't want to make people mad at me, and that's the thing that I really have to overcome. It's not, it's just, it's okay. Like, I'm their teacher. You can be nice and strict, <laughs> and I'm sure yes. Mr. Holland will be excited to talk to you when you ask, how would you handle this as you're in your student teaching internship? So let's look to our teacher education panel, Dr. Ewing. So, Sarah, you shared that you got to uh, experience a, a real 339 meeting discussion. Uh-oh. All right? Yeah, let's I go did, back. yeah. <laughs> All right, well, let's go back to program planning a little bit. Okay. And let's just talk about uh, that Chapter 339. Um, uh, I want to use the right word here because I want you to give the answer. Uh, process. Chapter 339 process. What do you see as the purpose for that, for going through that process? First, tell us a little bit about what it is, and, and then, again, just to refresh us, and then what do you see the purpose of, of such a process? So Chapter 339 is the program approval from the PA Department of Education, and it goes through a checklist basically of a comprehensive agriculture program of the three-circle model, the um, FFA, SAE, and classroom and lab experiences. And it's just making sure that they have, I guess, to say, have everything in order and have components that show student growth and maintain that. And a big part of going through this process is to get financial finances. Um, was there another part to that question? Well, I guess I'll just follow up. Okay. So if I throw two words at you, tell me what you think, which is the better answer. Compliance? Or program improvement? Program improvement. Why? Because I agree, but why? <laughs> because I said program improvement because I think that, as I said, it's really important to grow and to reach as many people as possible. Also, I believe that through program improvement, the word the word about agriculture will get out to more people in general, not just the students, but they could go back and um, tell all their friends that aren't in ag and maybe even recruit new members. Content question. Rosenstein and First were two researchers that talked about characteristics of effective teachers. They listed five primary characteristics. Could you please share those five characteristics? So, that, this is BCOP is life. Um, BCOP stands for, the B stands for business-like behavior. The E is enthusiasm. The C is clarity. The O is opportunity to learn. And the V is variability. Of those five characteristics, which one do you do the best now? That is a good question. I think... 
I would lean towards, I want to say enthusiasm, but it doesn't always come off that way. So my real answer will be opportunity to learn. I think that throughout, throughout my lessons, I'll ask questions. I plan to ask a lot of questions, leading questions for every slide or every aspect of my lesson. Which one area, which one of the five characteristics are you like, yep, in the spring, this is what I want to focus on? Probably clarity, mm. because I, as in the teaching labs again, and in my life knowledge lesson, which is something that I didn't talk about, but I taught, I taught my life knowledge lesson on communication during my Thanksgiving break down at Cedar Press, and some of the directions weren't very clear. That was the very first thing that Mr. Hausner said in his, um, in his observation of my teaching. And so I think working on clarity and pulling in from NAAE, I went to a workshop on directions, on effective directions, and it broke it down for us into certain aspects. And I just go through, now when I do write directions, I go through that checklist. Excellent. Our audience is here. Yes, sir. And this is a terrible question. First, that was a very nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next, having grown up through numerous ag labs, ag classes, and gone through the process, I'm going to try to help put things in perspective to you relative to feeling the need to enforce your discipline or become more strict. So my question becomes, do you think you could become more accepting of being strict on enforcing the discipline and the control you need in a lab, or would you prefer to have things fall off the wall? No. <laughs> would you prefer to be in that situation where because you weren't quite as um, strict as you needed to be in doing that, would you prefer to be in a situation where you've got to call up a parent and say, excuse me, but your child cut off a finger in the lab because I wasn't demanding enough that they follow the rules? So with lab procedures, I do feel as, well, I no, I need to be more strict because of that exact reason. I don't want to make that call. I don't even want to have any minor accidents. I know minor cuts and bruises are going to happen, but I don't even want that to happen. So if there's a lab safety infraction, then you're out of the lab. Um, there's, no, there's no question about that one. Does that answer what you wanted? <laughs> And may I just offer one comment that was made by an instructor while we were entering a class. But he started class off at the beginning of the semester and just held up his hand and he said, I want you to know I am X number of years old, I've been through so many labs, okay? And I want you to observe that I still have all 10 of my fingers. And I expect you all to leave here with all of yours too, so I expect you to do things correctly. Thank you very much for coming and sharing from the Animal Science Department and supporting. Appreciate it. How about the virtual? All right. This question comes from Seagrove, which I'm feeling like is Jeremy Grove. I don't know. It's from Seagrove on Zoom, and they want to know how you adapt your lessons for students with disabilities. So a lot of my lessons, um, some of the general ways that I go with that are, first, well, first, thank you for asking the question and attending my presentation virtually. Um, some general things that I have down, vocabulary handouts with definitions, if they need help in that aspect. Um, some other ones are obviously like moving in the classroom if they need to see better. And I think a really big one that I want to work on is having other students that are able to help the students with disabilities in certain aspects. 
Um, I think that's really important, just everybody working together and experiencing the diversity of learners and having an appreciation. Sarah, I think it's time for your last question. You ready? As ready as I'll ever be. Yeah, you're ready. You're going to do great. The, the last question for you, and I need you to take your time, think about it. This is one of those elevator type questions, which means that you have about 30 to 60 seconds to answer. Okay? So I'll be watching over there, and we're going to ask it, and we'll see if we can get it out. I'm a school principal. I'm looking you in the eye. You've already done a full day of interviewing with me. You've already uh, practiced, taught. You've given me all your materials, and I ask you this question at the very end. Why should I hire you? I think you should hire me because I am here for your students. I want to help them learn and grow, not only in their knowledge of agriculture, but also as a person. I also want to contribute to the school as a thought leader and a lifelong learner. All these words are coming to me now. <laughs> and just have that, I guess, radiate throughout the school. I think that's a great answer. Thank you for all your hard work.